This program is brought to you by Link TV for educational and non-commercial use only. Mosaic, a daily news program from Link TV, presents a selection of news reports from independent and state-controlled broadcasters from throughout the Middle East. The United States President George Bush announced that he will deploy more than 20,000 additional troops to Iraq as part of his new strategy. Bush called on Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Jordan and the Gulf states to support the Iraqi government. He said that these countries must understand that an American defeat in Iraq would create a strategic threat to their survival. I've committed more than 20,000 additional American troops to Iraq. The vast majority of them, five brigades, will be deployed to Baghdad. وأخيرا كشف الرئيس الأمريكي النقاب عن استراتيجيته المنتظرة ففي خطاب وجهه لشعبه أقر جورج بوش بالفشل وبارتكاب أخطاء في العراق من بينها At last the American president revealed his long awaited strategy in a speech made to the American public George Bush acknowledged that failures and mistakes were made in Iraq including not sending enough US troops to secure Baghdad His announcement to send more soldiers was made with the hope of correcting these mistakes Bush said that four 4,000 troops will be deployed in the Anbar province to eliminate al-Qaeda there. He warned of continued acts of violence in Iraq and anticipated more sacrifices will be made. Bush said that the Iraqi forces will take over security responsibility in Iraq by next November. At the political level, Bush warned Nur al-Maliki's government to end the sectarian violence, reiterating that America's commitment is not open-ended. And Prime Minister Maliki has pledged that political or sectarian interference will not be tolerated. I have made it clear to the Prime Minister and Iraq's other leaders that America's commitment is not open-ended. If the Iraqi government does not follow through on its promises, the Democrats were quick to issue their response. They believe that an increase of U.S. troops in Iraq is a new mistake. They also called on the Iraqi government to confirm its good intentions. We Americans and a few allies have protected Iraq when no one else would. Now in the fourth year of this war, it is time for the Iraqis to stand and defend their own nation. The government of Iraq must now prove that it will make the hard political decisions which will bring an end to this bloody civil war. Military experts join their voices with the Democrats. Some of them believe that 20,000 forces are not enough to bring stability to Baghdad. 20,000 can get lost in Baghdad very quickly. Baghdad is a big city of more than 6 million people. According to our experience with stability operations in Bosnia, we need one soldier or policeman for every five citizens. That is, of course, about 130,000 soldiers and policemen. The Iraqi police are not quite ready to take on that challenge. There are insufficient numbers on both the Iraqi and the American side. Bush بدا متفائلا إزاء تحقيق ما وصفه بالنصر وفقا لاستراتيجيته الجديدة أما Bush appeared optimistic about achieving victory through the new strategy. However, the Democrats differed, saying that such a strategy does not answer their questions about a timeline for withdrawal and the extent of Maliki's commitment to eliminate armed sectarian groups. However, the American public is divided between a president who is eager to leave behind an honorable legacy and a party that is preparing to enter the White House. وأجبق في الجزيرة واشنطن Political parties in Iraq held different positions toward the new American strategy. The Islamic Scholars Association condemned the decision to send more troops to what it described as an inferno, while the Iraqi government announced that it had consented to sending more troops. Ahmad Saleh with the details. 
The position of the Iraqi government toward the new American strategy is as vague as the U.S. president's speech announcing the new strategy. Baghdad made its position clear regarding the sending of more American troops, but was less clear about what it described as positive points in the new strategy. If security will come about by sending more troops, whether Iraqi or multinational, the Iraqi government will support this decision. The Iraqi parliament did not broach the subject. Its members agreed to set aside a special session to discuss Bush's latest strategy. Official response by Iraqi political forces was slow in dealing with the subject. Opinions by Iraqi politicians varied. A member of the Iraqi Accordance Front said that the strategy had major short shortcomings compared to the Baker-Hamilton report and an unjustified increase in the number of American troops in Baghdad. They are sending more than 20,000 additional troops. We fear that such a large number of troops in Baghdad may lead to human rights abuses. A number of Kurdish political leaders saw some positive points in the strategy, which they feel might lead to a better situation. It will have a positive and constructive effect on the future situation in Iraq. Members of the United Iraqi Alliance said that the new American strategy was vague concerning the authority of Iraqi security forces. We have an elected Iraqi government. It has sovereignty. It should run the country itself and not feel that its hands are tied. We did not see these points raised. The Iraqi political leadership is concerned that George Bush's new strategy might be more of a Middle East strategy rather than an Iraqi strategy. They contend that it helps strengthen the position of U.S. troops in the region, but remains vague about the role of the Iraqi armed forces and the recommendations of the Baker-Hamilton report. From Baghdad, Ahmed al-Saleh al-Arabiya. Ahmed al-Saleh al-Arabiya. In the land where American military strategies are being tested, Iraqis hope that this time America will fulfill its promises, especially those to support the Iraqi economy and advance national reconciliation. A few Iraqis, however, believe that the cooperation of the Iraqi government is essential to the success of any special strategy in the land of the two rivers. We leave you with this report from Abdel Latif Omar from Baghdad. Ordinary Iraqis believe that Bush's new strategy is an attempt to correct the mistakes of the past four years in Iraq. Iraqis also believe that the Bush administration has chosen a strategy for their country and their neighbors that is very different from the Baker-Hamilton report. Perhaps the increase in the number of American troops in Iraq is the most important point in Bush's speech. This point in particular has preoccupied ordinary Iraqis who fear that it may have repercussions. The objective behind increasing American troops in Iraq is to put the armed groups in a tough position and ultimately force them to give up their weapons. The American administration will use the next six months to implement what Bush talked about. In addition, the Iraqi government of Nur al-Maliki should take advantage of this period because the democratic-led Congress may not give the American administration another opportunity. The Congress does not want the Bush administration to continue on an endless road. The new American strategy in Iraq included promises to improve the economy, public services, and to reintegrate the Ba'athists into the political process. The Iraqis have heard these kinds of promises before, but this time they have hope that the United States will fulfill them. We support Bush's new strategy because we need security, but frankly, we want the Americans to get out of our country. God willing, this strategy will be the last chance for the American government. We heard a lot of promises, a lot of shining promises, but no single man except Bush has caused Iraq as much devastation. Iraqis are still cautiously optimistic about Bush's strategy, assuming that the Iraqi government will cooperate. The long-term solution that the Iraqis envision is the withdrawal of the American occupation.
occupation forces. From Baghdad, Abdul Latif Omar, Dubai Television. Joining us from Amman is Dr. Subhi Nadim, a political expert from the International Studies Center in Baghdad University. Dr. Nadim, do you think that Bush has provided a tangible strategy to solve the problem in Iraq? Was there anything new in Bush's plan? أنا لم أرى من كثر ما من كثر ومن عظم ما تسربت من نقاط. In the name of God, the most merciful and compassionate, I noticed that many of Bush's points were already leaked to the media before he gave his speech. I did not notice anything new that is worth mentioning. Bush's speech repeated points that had been said before. What Bush said was already proposed by the American administration throughout the past three years and particularly in recent months. Why didn't Bush consider the Baker-Hamilton report? Do you think that his reliance on force will correct his mistakes in Iraq? I will be brief. The neoconservatives who have been ruling America since 1991 believe in the use of force more than anything else. This is one of their disadvantages. At the same time, I want to make it clear. Any commander-in-chief or president does not necessarily have to go along with only one report or with one piece of advice. He has many political political and military consultants around him and he has to make up his own mind. The Ministry of Interior is honoring the family of police martyrs. The ministry's honorary ceremony was overseen by General Ali al yasri the chief of police in Baghdad. Policemen did not only change their uniforms from khaki to blue, they wore true national clothes and stood in the front lines to confront terrorism. A long list of martyrs is indicative of this. On the 85th anniversary of the establishment of this active organization, the Ministry of Interior honored the police martyrs. The ministry received their families and thank them for giving up their loved ones. We are honoring the families of our national martyrs and heroes who sacrificed their lives for the country. We hope that we can address all their needs. I want to say that we have done little for you, but you know the difficult situation we are going through. I would also like to deliver to you the greetings of the Prime Minister, Maliki, who was here a short time ago. Also, I would like to deliver to you the greetings of the Minister of Interior. Iraqi policemen insist on continuing to work towards creating security in Iraq and contributing to its reconstruction at all levels to express their loyalty to our martyred brothers. To show our loyalty to all the policemen who sacrificed their lives, we vow to stay committed to our national duty and willingness to sacrifice our lives. We are committed to our noble national mission and obligation to our people with enthusiasm and determination. God willing, we hope to achieve all our security goals and provide services and aid to our great nation. Believers carry out their vows to God. The policemen fulfilled their duties and defended the nation. With one hand, they carry their weapons, and with the other, they offer their support. In their hearts, they keep the vows they have taken upon themselves during their graduation ceremonies. Iraqis in Basra are having their mobile phone calls cut off while occupation forces patrol the city. This situation has negatively affected telephone services as well as the interests of the Iraqi citizens. For the past three years, security and services in Iraq have been the greatest challenges facing consecutive Iraqi governments. Despite this, three mobile telecommunications companies have been able to create a vast network of communication towers which provide coverage over most territory in Iraq without being negatively affected by the deteriorating security situation. Within a few months, mobile phone services had become very popular in Iraq. Despite the high cost involved in mobile phone services, it seems that their disadvantages still outweigh the advantages. 
Sometimes you need to make a very important call, and then a patrol vehicle passes by and cuts off your phone call. They may be interrupting an emergency. Each time a security issue arises, the occupation forces usually try to take charge of the situation. The telecommunications network quickly goes down when any occupation forces convoy passes by. Specialists say that they use high-frequency jamming equipment that covers the area where they are present, which negatively affects phone services in the area. Or they use sound waves to disable other scrambling transmissions where they are stationed. In the Basra province, the British patrols have scrambling equipment that jams the network, which cuts off our phone calls. This sometimes happens when British and American patrols in Baghdad or other areas pass by. They transmit special frequencies in order to cut off telecommunications in a specific area for a number of hours, depending on their objectives. The worst areas for phone coverage are where the British military bases are located. In the past few months, these forces intensified their raid campaigns in various neighborhoods throughout the city. So, we can imagine the negative impact of the occupation on the telephone communications network, which often completely shuts down. This is how the occupation forces have become a part of the telecommunications network crisis, just as it has been a part of many other crises and problems that have plagued this country. How long can we expect the current instability in Iraq to last, and how much of an effect does Iran have on the ongoing crisis in the area? Those are some of the questions IBA's Ali Walgalarnter put to Professor Amatsia Baram, who participated this week in a conference on Iran sponsored by Hebrew University and the Israel Project. I see a, an optimistic scenario and a very pessimistic one, and about 20 or 30 in the middle, but let's talk only about the optimist optimistic and pessimistic ones. Uh, optimistically speaking, if within a year, two or three, no more, the Sunnis and the Shi'is who are now uh, at loggers' heads, the Kurds are a bit on the side, will manage to hit a bargain, to, to reach a compromise in which everybody gets what they really must have but will give up a lot else. In other words, both sides will be reasonably unhappy, reasonably unhappy. Then I can see uh, an Iraqi state, much more stable, far, far less terrorism, and a, a central government, but not as strong as under Saddam, no way. It will be, of course, decentralized to a large extent, uh, a la Canada. Uh, and yet, uh, not as quiet as, uh, as serene as Canada, but still. And that, that is the optimistic scenario. They need to reach a compromise. They now find it extremely difficult. If they don't reach a compromise, if there is no political solution, then I see this kind of uh, civil war even escalating very slowly more. And I see many years of serious unrest, and Iraq will become a focus of huge instability. Uh, and, and it will spread instability around the Middle East. I see this is a major, major problem. For example, the Saudis will get on the side of the Sunnis, the Iranians on the side of the Shi'is. The Kurds will be left on their own, but maybe America will guarantee some kind of autonomy for them, which I believe will happen. And then you have a, a lot of instability. Jordan will be in danger. Uh, it's going to be difficult. How much of that instability in Iraq now is affecting the world dealing with the problem of Iran? Well, it does in the sense that it limits American action. Uh, the Iranians know it, so the Iranians feel emboldened. Uh, it's a byproduct of you. you I mean, there, there, there is no such thing as, as free meals, right, or free lunches. Uh, if America went into Iraq, there is a price to pay, and that's the price to pay. Uh, so I would say yes, as long as you have instability in Iraq, and uh, not, I, I'm not sure the Iranians are interested in total instability, in total war, because that that will immediately involve them. Uh, with, with Saudi Arabia and the Gulf states and Jordan uh, in, 
lots of problems for them too. They'd like to have instability, uh, you know, on small fire. And if that goes on, Iran feels better than it would have felt otherwise. How much is Iran contributing towards the instability in Iraq? Iran is interested in instability in Iraq. As I said, limited instability that will A, humiliate America. B, will create a situation in which the Shiites of Iraq need Iran very badly. And C, they will have a control over large parts of Iraq, maybe even somehow hegemonic control. Yes, so instability is, I think, a very important interest of Iran, provided it doesn't get out of hand. The ambassador of Switzerland, which currently represents U.S. interests in Iran, along with the Iraqi envoy to Tehran, were summoned to the foreign ministry on Thursday following a raid by U.S. forces on Iran's diplomatic mission in the Iraqi northern city of Arbil. The American forces stormed the mission overnight, arresting as many as five Iranian diplomats, taking away documents and causing extensive damage to the building. Foreign Ministry spokesman Mohammad Ali Hosseini said Washington should be held accountable for the attack, which is another failed attempt by the White House to cover up its failures in Iraq. Hosseini said the Iraqi government is expected to follow through the incident, adding Iran is awaiting the results of an inquest into the attack. Meanwhile, an Iraqi MP said the U.S. strike on the Iranian office in Arbil translates into invasion of Iraq's Kurd-controlled areas. Earlier, forces loyal to Masoud Barzani closed down the city's airport, barring the transfer of the diplomats. And Iraqi government spokesman Ali al Dabar said Baghdad is pursuing the case. The attack on Iran's diplomatic mission came hours after U.S. President George W. Bush unveiled his new Iraq strategy to send extra combat troops to war-torn Iraq. The U.S. has time and again accused Tehran of meddling in the Iraqi internal affairs, something the Iraqi president and prime minister have strongly rejected. In his TV address, the U.S. president admitted defeat in Iraq. Bush said Americans do not approve of the situation in Iraq, adding he takes the responsibility in person for military failures in the country. Meanwhile, Republican Senator Gordon Smith said what Bush is doing in Iraq is a repeat of past mistakes. Senator Vasila Clark, too, said U.S.-Iraq strategy was a mistake in the first place, something the American families are paying its dear price. And Chairman of the Congressional Foreign Relations Committee, Senator Joseph Bitten, said the U.S. nation wants to see its forces pulled back from the quagmire they got bogged down in Iraq. Meanwhile, Richard Durbin was another U.S. senator to blast Bush, who in his speech said he will send over 20,000 additional U.S. troops in Iraq. It's time for President Bush to face the reality of Iraq, and the reality is this. America has paid a heavy price. We have paid with the lives of more than 3,000 of our soldiers. We have paid with the sacrifice of our men and women in uniform, and we've paid with the hard-earned tax dollars of the families of America. This speech also drew harsh reactions from American people who gathered in front of the White House chanting anti-war slogans. The ralliers called for a swift withdrawal of American forces from Iraq. Over 3,000 American forces have been killed in Iraq since the U.S.-led invasion in March 2003. This is why new polls in the United States show 61 percent of Americans are against escalation of the number of U.S. troops in Iraq. And still commenting on the admission by President Bush of Iraq failure, CNN said the U.S. defeat in Iraq is sure to happen. CNN also said many analysts believe Washington has been dealt a heavy blow in its plans for the new Middle East roadmap. They believe that the U.S. is losing its influence in the region, whereas the sway Iran holds with its neighbors is on the rise. CNN also reported in line with its shuttle diplomacy, the White House is to send Secretary Rice to the Middle East to win over regional countries in defiance of Iran. 
The U.S. has stepped up pressure on global companies to suspend their trade ties with Iran in a bit to economically isolate Tehran, something which it claims will force Iran to drop its nuclear program. The German media said this move will damage the hands some profits German companies make in the region. They add some German banks have bowed to the mounting pressures, ending their dollar-based transactions with Iran. It comes as the German firms have expressed concern over the measure. The German an export to Iran followed a downward trend, posting a 14 percent decrease in the first three quarters of 2006. Currently, the German companies are trying to enter partnership with Iran behind a facade of anything but trade transactions. The Siemens Electronics Company is close to conclusion of a deal worth of 450 million euros with Tehran, but it has so far declined to comment on the contract. And China warned the United States on Thursday not to meddle in its trade relations with Iran after Washington expressed concern about a Chinese oil company's planned investment in an Iranian gas field. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Lia Jiantao said, quote, We think this kind of cooperation and relationship is legitimate. Normal cooperation should not be interfered. The U.S. government expressed concern to Beijing last month about a planned investment by state-owned Chinese oil company CNOOC in Iran's northern Paris gas field. And now let's move on to Iraq, where Saddam's cousin Chemical Ali moved center stage in Iraq's genocide trial Thursday, occupying the executed dictator's chair in court and confessing that he ordered thousands of Kurds to be forced out of their homes. Ali Hassan al-Majid, who faces the gallows if found guilty of slaughtering 182,000 Kurdish villagers in the 1980s, claimed responsibility for the displacement of thousands of Kurds, but said he he took the decision alone without going back to the high military command or Ba'ath Party commander. And thousands of Spanish human rights activists have put their signature on a letter calling on the U.S. government to close its notorious prison in Guantanamo Bay, marking the fifth anniversary of prisoners' arrival at the detention center. The protesters were wearing orange clothes to show their sympathy with Guantanamo inmates being tortured by their U.S. guards. Shouting anti-U.S. slogans, the activists delivered their protesting letter to the U.S. embassy in Madrid. Pretend close Guantanamo, that is, the U.S. government closed Guantanamo. We have collected in one month 1,500 signatures from people in Spain concerned about the lack of justice in Guantanamo and in the treatment to the Chinese by the U.S. forces in uh, Afghanistan and Iraq, etc. Families of detainees called today during their weekly sit-in strike in front of the International Committee of the Red Cross in Gaza to ease the situation and to be committed to the national unity. For his part, member of Fatah Movement Revolutionary Council, Hisham Abdel Razak, appealed for the Palestinian leadership, presidency and government to work for preventing the bloodshed as well as intensifying the efforts to come out of the current crisis. The Regional Council for the Non-Recognized Villages in the Negev, south of Israel, reported that the Israeli authorities continue demolishing homes and seizing Arab lands in the area. In a statement, the Council said that the Israeli Knesset Interior Committee, in its visit to the Arab area in Negev, did nothing for halting the Israeli policy of demolishing, but worked for gathering support for forthcoming elections. Since 1948, the Israeli authorities refused to deliver building permissions for thousands of Arab Israeli families in the Negev and bad essential services, especially sewage, water, and electricity. The views expressed on Mosaic are those of the participating broadcasters, not Link TV or its sponsors. Please visit linktv.org backslash mosaic for more information about these broadcasters or to view previous Mosaic programs obtain program transcripts, or receive the weekly Mosaic Intelligence Report. Mosaic is made possible by a grant from the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation.
Additional support is provided by the Firedall Foundation, the Otto Haas Charitable Trust, and by committed Link TV viewers like you. If you value this program, please send your tax deductible contribution to Link TV, either through the website or the mailing address listed on your screen. This program was brought to you by Link TV for educational and non commercial use only. Link TV is the only U.S. television network devoted to global and national news with uncompromising documentaries and diverse cultural programs, programs which connect you to the world.